I'm the chairman of Mitchell Communications Group and the president of ECO, the International Communications Consultancy Organization. And I am here with last year's Young Lions winners, Lutza Hadnaj with HPS and Paloma Medina with AECG in Hungary. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Yes, I'm glad you're here. We are also here with a group at the House of PR, so welcome to all of you who are in attendance today. <laughs> glad everybody's here. We have an incredible topic, a topic everybody wants to know the answer to, which is how to win a PR line at Cannes. And you guys did that. You won the Young Lions competition last year, so congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you still have to be basking a little bit in the, the good feeling of that, because it's, you had a lot of stiff competition for your for your award um, we're gonna dig into that quite a bit because people here want to know how do they do what you have done so first though I want you to tell me a little bit about yourselves uh, what you do your job title um, where you went to school just give us a sense of, of who you are um, hey everyone uh, my name is Luca Hadnagy and uh, I'm from uh, HBS Hungary actually as uh, Elise said um, well, I'm a PR consultant and uh, working on FMCG uh, brands uh, mostly and uh, with the perfect team of mine. Uh, and then uh, basically I was a marketing, I was working in marketing, in brand management uh, at L'Oreal, uh, but then I changed to PR and uh, now we're here, lucky to be here <laughs> actually. And it's an incredible journey. So Great, you know. okay. Paloma, tell us about yourself. Hello, I'm Paloma Medina. I work at uh, ACG in Hungary. Uh, I also worked a couple of years in PR and uh, now I changed to, uh, to strategic planning. So now I'm a strategic planner, but uh, I used to be a PR consultant with Lutze. So we worked together until last year. Good, okay. Well, my very first question is, we're gonna get to the brief in a minute, but tell me how you won the chance to represent your country in the Young Lions competition. I am sure you had a lot of competitors who wanted to come. Uh, last year was the first time that they organized the uh, local competition in Hungary. So we were the first, uh, first ones to come in PR. And uh, we in, in the local competition, we had a, a for-profit company, Heineken, in the brief. So for us, it was pretty uh, new challenge to, to work for a non-profit uh, NGO and uh, uh, the British Red Cross, but uh, but the Hungarian uh, local competition was also a really good uh, experience, and it was a big surprise that we won. We so you had a brief that you had to compete against in your own country, yes. right, in order to advance here. Yes. Uh, okay. So uh, tell us about the brief. That's I think everybody wants to know that. So once you arrived here in Cannes, beautiful Cannes, uh, you had to get down to work pretty quickly. They gave you the brief. The first day, yes. Uh, tell what was your brief? Exactly. So our brief was uh, coming from the British Red Cross. Uh, as Paloma said, it was hard for us because mostly we were working on FMCG brands, and, uh, uh, and so that's why it was exciting. Uh, the brief was uh, about the silent emergencies, the ones that didn't make the headlines actually. The uh, and the biggest one is uh, the crisis at Lake Chad. Uh, so we had to highlight this crisis um, and then get people to donate uh, so British Red Cross can work um, the perfect way as they do. Uh, so it was hard but exciting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about Lake Chad. What do we know about Lake Chad and why would that have been an interesting brief that the judges would have given you? Uh, well, we were pretty surprised when we got the brief because uh, in the previous years uh, the topics were more uh, global. I mean, they were more general, mm -hmm. and it was uh, th that time uh, last year. It was more focusing on one area, but it's uh, it's also a, a really big problem because it affects almost 10 million people. Mm -hmm. So, so it's a uh, it's a really big issue, and uh, and uh, diseases, poverty, and uh, and uh, whatever you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So so what's the problem with the lake? Tell us a little bit more about what was the challenge to the local people. So actually, uh, the thing was that the lake was, I don't know, 100 times bigger uh, or originally. Uh, but now it's really small. So that's why there's a crisis around it. Uh, there's poverty and uh, uh, 
people are suffering everywhere and it's really huge because uh, as Paloma said uh, 10 million people is affected by this mm -hmm. and actually this was our insight one of them mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Lake Chad is now twice as uh, as I remember twice as big as uh, our Lake Balaton which is the biggest lake in Central Europe uh, and the other thing is that 10 million people are affected, so uh, it's the almost the same amount of people uh, of the population of Hungary. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's how we try to uh, get closer. Good tonight. Okay, so let's talk about the insights process because that's always where we want to begin, right? You can come up with all kinds of creative ideas, but if they don't drive the impact that you need for the organization, you're missing something. So you just mentioned a couple of key insights that you had that then led you to your creative concept, right? Yeah. So the first insight was that the lake used to be much larger than it is today. It affected 10 million people, and 10 million people is the same size of the population roughly as your home country of Hungary, right? And you began to draw the parallels between that and Lake Balaton that mm -hmm. is in Central Europe. So what else, what was another insight that you had that began to give you the germ of an idea? Uh, when it comes to charity, Hungarian people uh, didn't uh, donate to causes that they cannot relate to, usually. Mm -hmm. So our challenge was to bring this issue closer to them mm -hmm. uh, and get uh, to the donation part, of course. So that was maybe probably the third part uh, that we had to work on, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the insight there being, how do I make this relevant to my target audience, yes. right? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, as Lutza told, uh, Hungarian people are more uh, concerned about the issues that they can uh, relate to and uh, that's why we try to find a connection between Lake Balaton and Lake Chad and, uh, and uh, we made a campaign Lake for Lake uh, and uh, find the concept that what if Lake Balaton would disappear. Ah. So that was our main question and uh, we use different tools to, to make it happen or to, to bring awareness to the issue through Lake Balaton. So taking your insights, then you came up with your creative concept. So you're, the core of your campaign, your idea is Lake for Lake, yes. right? Oh, hashtag Lake for Lake. <laughs> the idea being that here is a lake that people can relate to in Central Europe, that they might begin to think about what it would be like if their lake began to dry up. Yeah. Yes, because uh, we think that lakes are bringing people together. Mm -hmm. They are uh, not only culturally but economically more um, really important to them. So mm -hmm. these are something that they can be easily related to. So how so in the week? So take us through the process. How quickly did you come up with that idea? And did you have uh, like a hundred other ideas that you tossed out? How did you end up with that one? <laughs> funny that you asked because <laughs> actually it was our first idea it was but then we oh, were like wow. okay maybe it's not enough <laughs> in here we are in Cannes <laughs> uh, so we had to think about other things and then uh, okay if the next day around noon uh, we didn't come up with another idea then we will go with plan B mm -hmm. and it was plan B mm -hmm. uh, so but actually we, we had the chance to present this idea B and Good. It's the one, yeah. So yeah. once you, tell us what happens as you get ready to go before the judges. Because what's different, of course, about Young Lions is that you're doing it all within the space of a week, mm -hmm. whereas the people who are entering in the normal Lions competitions is work that they've done throughout the year. So you're in a little bit more of a compressed time period, but that's not so different than getting ready for a pitch for a new client or um, a crisis campaign where you have to react very quickly. Mm -hmm. So tell us what, uh, kind of when you began to go with your idea then how did you prepare to go before the judges? What 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 did you what was required to get ready? <laughs> yeah, it was funny because uh, usually we didn't have that much of time to think about an idea uh, generally mm -hmm. at our workplace. Uh, so it was plenty of time to um, to have this idea and uh, plan the campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was one day uh, where we can we could have um, work on this project and then. Uh, the next day there was the presentation part, uh, but I guess only in PR there is a presentation, an oral presentation, mm -hmm. so that's different. Uh, but we were glad that we had this chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. 
that's the main advantage in PR, I guess, because the other competitors have no chance to to tell their um, story more uh, deeply, and uh, and that's great that we had the chance. Which again is great practice for what you do every day, oh, right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> to be able to present to the client in a very convincing yeah. fashion. Uh, what was so? Give us a little bit more of the details of how you fleshed out the campaign. What were some of the key elements of the campaign? Uh, we wanted to use uh, new technologies, but our target group was um, an older generation, and we combined uh, an old school uh, tool with the modern technology. Okay. And uh, there are plenty of these uh, coin inserted telescopes around the lake, so we we uh, made them uh, with uh, we inserted this VR technology to to make them see Lake, Bal uh, lake Chad instead of Lake Balaton when they are uh, hike hiking around the lake. So mm -hmm. uh, that was the first step. And uh, after they got this, uh, um, I don't know, experience about mm -hmm. the lake, they got information about how to donate. And of course, because it's coin inserted, th there is also a first step to, mm -hmm. the, to the donation. The donation. Uh, that was the first part. And there was also a social, yeah. uh, social part. Mm -hmm. You tell yeah. about that. Yeah, <laughs> the social part was about that. Uh, the insight was that people always take pictures about Balaton, about Lake Balaton. So it's we arrive to the lake, one picture. <laughs> uh, there is a beautiful sunset, one picture. Here and I am on my boat. Exactly, that's one picture. Yeah, I'm yeah. with my goulash or whatever. Yeah. So because yeah, you're in Hungary, so exactly. it's goulash. Right, yeah. 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 of course. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you have all these photos on your social media. Right. But then what if we make Lake Balaton disappear from these pictures? So we would uh, take them and Photoshop them uh, and just uh, draw it everywhere and uh, without the, la the, picture, the same picture wi without the Balaton. Um, and that was the second part. And the third part was that uh, uh, actually Balaton and lakes inspired a lot of artists uh, mm -hmm. over the years, over uh, the decades. Um, and uh, there are some really famous Hungarian paintings about Lake Balaton mm -hmm. and we would organize uh, a charity uh, exhibition mm -hmm. uh, where we would show all these uh, big painter, um, all these big art, art, pieces, art pieces actually yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and then without the uh, lake. Without the lake. Yeah. Yeah. So people could yeah. imagine what it would be like if they lived yes. around Lake Chad, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, that's a great campaign. Mm -hmm. So what did the judges say? What were the comments? Uh, they highlighted that it was insightful, as, uh, as we said before, and also that we know our target audience pretty well. So we uh, we brought it home because we don't know, uh, we, we know the best our, our people and our country, but it can be also uh, extended anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, one of the main uh, reasons we won. And, uh, and uh, what else? I don't know. And that the insights were good, yes? Oh yeah, yeah, right. They said it was really good to the target audience and uh, the things that we used about the 10 million people, about the size of the lakes and all these little Connection. things and connections. Yeah. And of course it's uh, fitted with the, the British Red Cross because uh, that's also a big uh, oh yeah. That's issue. Right. <laughs> the British Red Cross and then uh, the idea of Lake for Lake scaling to other countries, other regions of the world is a campaign that could be modified and used yeah. in other places. It has scale. <laughs> Good. That's great. I, well, congratulations. I'm so Thank excited you. for you guys. You know, but our audience and our viewers want to know how do they win? So I'm wondering what kind of takeaways, what kind of advice that you have for practitioners who are wanting to enter their work and can. What, what were some of the key lessons that you've learned from this experience? Uh, for me was that uh, PR is not a toolkit, but more like an approach. So you can use many other tools that are not uh, traditionally uh, used in PR. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was one of the uh, main uh, things that I've learned, and uh, and that uh, of course that focus on the f uh, on the inside and your target, and. Um, I don't know. Trust your first idea, maybe. <laughs> you have to go with Tr the first idea. Trust or your maybe, first idea. Yeah, Sometimes important. that can be the best one, yeah, right? You can exactly. put a hundred up there, but really the, <laughs> but the, the first one, one yeah. could still be a very good and one. And have fun. That's have really fun. important. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. That's probably the best <laughs> And believing in your own work, I'm sure that you are passionate about your presentation to the judges, right? Yeah. Right. Well, I wanted to share just a little bit with our audience, too, and take some questions as well. Uh, I was 
uh, very honored to serve on the jury for the PR Lines a couple of years ago. It was in 2014. And I remember in the jury room, so putting myself in the judge's shoes uh, instead of in the entrance point of view, uh, we had to judge so many campaigns. What was it that won? And we did end up coming up with a list of criteria. And I remember after I had that experience, I spoke a number of times to people and tried to share with them some of the learnings that I took away because you do have a chance to see the, the industry globally. We had over 1,800 injuries to judge, and there were, um, we had jurors from about 20 different countries. I think there were 22 of us on the jury together. But it was, it was very interesting. Creativity, of course, was at the core, but a question that we asked ourselves and debated the whole week as judges is what is creative? What makes something creative? For example, one of the questions we had was, does, it ha does an idea have to be original in order to win? Because we saw a lot of great campaigns that were remakes of an idea that had happened maybe in another industry or in years past. Would that be something that you would be willing to give the top prize to? So I don't know. What, do you have an opinion about originality? <laughs> well, Actually, you have to try your best to be original, but sometimes, um, as Paul Holmes said one time, uh, that sometimes when you are create creative, you steal someone's idea. <laughs> so if you have to get inspired, you, you, for example, you came here to Cannes, you see all those things, and then you take back home with you some notes, some ideas, some inspiration, mm -hmm. and some way it's stealing, of course, mm -hmm. but some way it's original because then you mix with your own um, ideas mm -hmm. and everything. And so, yeah. <laughs> One of the things we finally decided was that there's, you know, the, the phrase, there's no original idea under the sun. <laughs> Everything has always been used or borrowed from somewhere yeah. else. But what we felt like, if you've taken it from within your own industry, it really is not going to be an award winner because it's too close, too much mm -hmm. of a copy. But if it's an idea that had been done in a different industry and you brought it to your industry, to a new industry, to a client's sector, um, that that would be a very interesting way of maybe twisting something a bit and using it in a new way. Another thing that was uh, important criteria for us was something that was something that resonated with the audience, which you you did as you were considering your target audience. Something that was very relevant, which you did by making it local. Local was a big one for us. Is how do you make something resonate locally? Uh, was very important. We talked a lot about too on having a fresh take. Like how do you have a fresh take on uh, maybe an idea that's been around a while, and how do you put maybe shed a new light on it or change the conversation in a different way? was something that we thought was important too. Mm -hmm. What about measurement? Did they t did the judges talk at all about metrics and measurement with you? No, not that time. Actually, mm -hmm. we were afraid that uh, they will ask us because we didn't put in our presentation, but before the presentation we were talking about the metrics, what if if they ask what should we do, how to measure all these things, but uh, for example, with the coin inserted the telescopes, right. it's easy to measure to measure that. Mm -hmm. uh, with the social media posts and all this engagement and mm -hmm. reaches and whatever, uh, you can measure it, and as well as with the exhibition. Mm -hmm. So, um, but measuring is measurement is always hard in VR, I guess. Well, and it's going beyond just um, awareness, right? So yeah. it's not just impressions, it's not just views, but it could be how do I impact the business, right? How am I going to drive the business objectives and accomplish the goal? And the challenge is to uh, actually change the way people think, mm -hmm. and uh, that's hard. Yes, <laughs> agree it is. And agree it's hard it to is. measure. That, that's hard to measure, yeah. but there are some really great new tools yeah. out there that make things a lot more powerful. Um, I wonder if we have any questions from the audience. Does anybody have a particular question about how how to win it can, something that uh, somebody wants to bring forward. When you did your competition, did you have a time frame in mind that by one o'clock in the afternoon I want to find an idea, by midnight I want to find a contact, or did you just roll with it? How was that kind of 24, 48 hours for you? Um, we had an idea, but then it, <laughs> it didn't work that well, so uh, we were like, um, we came up with the idea in the very first day in, in a couple of hours, but then uh, until the next uh, next day noon, we we were like just challenging each other, and we didn't write a sentence or we didn't make a slide. And when we were in the room uh, at I don't know eight or nine a.m., 
uh, next day uh, we saw that everyone was like preparing their presentations and uh, we had no idea what to write and what to do <laughs> and it was uh, pretty confusing but uh, that's not an uncommon feeling <laughs> 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 yeah. and then we were like okay until noon we have to find another or a better idea but if we not we are going with the plan B with Lake Balaton and that was actually that was the way so Time frames are good and they help, but sometimes it sometimes <laughs> works another way. Yeah, sometimes it's positive <laughs> pressure and sometimes it's not positive <laughs> pressure. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else have another question that they want to bring forward? Anybody else? I do want to ask you guys one thing, though, uh, an, uh, on a similar topic, because I know that you came from not from a PR background, and you were in PR, and now you've moved into more of a strategy position. So how how do we attract young Lions winners to come work at our agencies and work for our companies. What What is it that attracts you to PR? What do you think would be some good advice to give employers um, as they look to hire talent like you? I think PR is, uh, is between like creative and accounting because it's also um, beside the executional part it's really creative uh, work and uh, that's what not many people know or it's I actually in Hungary I don't know anywhere else mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, but in Hungary there is more like a traditional pr approach in PR that's more like press relations and stuff like that mm -hmm. and uh, that should be changed and uh, and uh, people should know that it's really a creative industry and uh, and maybe that's the combination that would attract more mm -hmm. youngsters I don't know yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's all about the creativity, I think, as well. So if you have the chance and the opportunity to to rise and shine mm -hmm. <laughs> somewhere, um, and you you really have to be some part with yourself, um, with your ideas, but also in a teamwork, in a good team, it's really important. Um, but yeah, it's it's you have to show, uh, I guess, for us, for our millennials generation. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have to show how fun is this PR mm -hmm. profession mm -hmm. is actually. Yeah. And it's not, every, everything's different every day, right? Oh, yeah. It's not the same. Yeah. That's not the same. Well, good. Well, thank you and congratulations thank you again. For having us. Thank you to our audience for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you.